Purchase your beats today. Purchase your beats today. Now, we can all see that you're very passionate about gender disparity issues in the professional space. It is just no question about that. And I have also seen that you've started a multitude of women's organizations, such as the LaSalle Association of Women MBAs. And then you co-founded the Women of Ingredient at Ingredient Incorporated. You also founded the, uh, the, the council at your place of work. Could you just please share with our audience what these organizations are all about and what motivated you to focus on women and advancing gender disparity in the professional space? Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, I do want to clarify that I did not found a DNI council. You know, I was a member of it, you know, the, the founding member. But um, so, so it's interesting, you, because this question actually ties in with something that you just said, right, about leaders you know, leveraging diversity, and I'll, I'll make the connection for you to see. Um, so first of all, I will start with, um, you know, just my personal experience and my personal story. So when I was in business school, I went to business school, I, I'm a scientist by training, I'm a food chemist, and I went to business school uh, without any background in business. I had never even taken a class in economics, right? So I go to business school, and um, unfortunately, it's a great environment, it's a very affirmative environment. So, so I ended up majoring in finance, and marketing. Um, and in my finance class, um, you know, it was mostly male, right? So pe people may not be aware of this, but this, this year is the first year that Wall Street got the first female CEO. So Wall Street has been around for over 100 years, right? Very successful. The most successful economic uh, experiment in the world is Wall Street, and they've never had a female CEO. So it's in 2020. Right. Um, so you can imagine finance is just a very male dominated world. Now, it's not that we don't have women in finance. Right. If you look around, you know, people who majored in accounting, they've majored in finance. But in terms of leadership. Right. And sort of really driving and leading. We just haven't had women. And this was my experience in business school. Now, I wasn't aware of the statistics. Right. I was interested in majoring in finance because of my career when I sort of looked at my career plan. And um, and so our finance class was all these men, um, a majority of men, a lot of them were bankers, they had come from Wall Street. And so they would have great conversations with the professor and us, the women, were less than a third of the class. We literally felt excluded, right? We, we just had no voice. Number one, there were very few of us. We all felt insecure. Um, so my closest friend at the time, you know, we got together because there was just no way. We felt that we needed to empower each other. We felt that as women, we needed to empower each other um, to speak up and I think that's now actually a concept where they talk about echoing right if a woman says something you always echo it you repeat it so that you know it, it sort of gets amplified um, but that's really what drove us then because we all felt isolated um, alone by ourselves um, and so we decided to start the the, um, the women's MBA group and the goal was number one to make sure that we knew we, we had a support system for each other you know be it in very practical things like Finance is, is a tough science, right? It's very complicated. So even from there, but we also wanted to find role models. We wanted graduates from our business school who were women to be able to network and to be able to identify with them because we felt that if we saw women who were successful, we saw women who, um, who had sort of survived this very tough environment, um, you know, that would, that would sort of inspire us. And here's the interesting thing. Um, so our dean at the time was a male. And when we, when we founded this organization, we needed a budget, right? Because we needed to bring in speakers, we needed to launch the organization. Um, so we prepared a PowerPoint presentation um, to present to the dean with our whole business case. And Dr. Guan I believe it or not, we walk into his office and I go, um, we wanna do a presentation. He goes, you don't need a presentation. I believe in what you're doing, you're approved. We're gonna fund this, right? So yeah. the lesson here is that the issue of uh, gender disparity is not by design. I always tell people that I honestly do not believe that men purposely exclude women. It's not by design, um, but for us to fix the problem, we have to design solutions, right? We have to be active in how we fix the problem because it's a problem that just exists, right? Nobody. Um, our dean at the time was male. He wasn't aware that women had a problem. And the minute we didn't even have to present a business case, the minute we said, 
we want to create an organization for women to network, to empower each other, to uplift each other, because we're in a very male dominated field. He said, I don't need to hear your business case. You're approved and I'm going to fund your organization. You know, so, um, so that was wonderful. Um, and, and, as, and why it was important for us, the second part of your question um, is because of this whole idea of, um, you know, this whole idea of modeling, right? It, a lot of times it's very difficult for people to think about a career if they haven't seen someone in that career. So if you, if you remember when President Obama was president, a lot of, you know, minorities now said, wow, I can be president. So you need to see women in leadership roles. You need to see successful women um, to be able to visualize and to be able to see yourself in that role. Um, and so that's why to me, a lot of these women organizations are, are very necessary. It's very good that successful women pull up the women behind them. Um, it's very important that women empower each other to speak of. Um, you know, I think one of the things we close out with was leaders, make sure you leverage diversity, right? So we always speak to le leaders. If you have a diverse team, make sure you give everybody the chance to speak. Um, you know, not every culture, people, sometimes people come from cultures where they don't speak up, right? So you have to encourage people to speak up. But the flip side of, 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 of it is that if you're a minority in a room, feel empowered to speak up. That's the whole sense of belonging. Feel empowered to speak up. And there are times when you're going to speak up and you'll be shut down and maybe you have a manager or a leader who doesn't want to listen, but do not be discouraged because there's someone else watching you who might also be inspired to speak up. Purchase your beats today. <laughs>